and uh, thanks for inviting me. And uh, where I'm going next is kind of building on what Eric shared about the edge compute and also the uh, gap housings, the gap nodes. And I'm going to now focus on how are the cable access networks evolving? How is DOCSIS evolving and connecting these two things in the cable access future networks? So that's my topic. And I will also then try to look at how that is supporting the convergence promise. But first, let's just agree that during recent years, uh, there has been a plethora of technologies, architectures, abbreviations to chew on. And uh, I assume that it can be sometimes a bit hard to navigate through this maze of technologies, especially for a mid-size operator, especially here in Europe, where perhaps not everybody is so closely following the cable apps and SCTE work. Now to simplify my story, I'm mainly focusing on the DAA evolu evolution and trying to make sense that uh, why are we talking still about remote fire architectures, Mac fire architectures? Do we have some sense in the industry why we are changing and uh, looking at different architectures in the future cable access? Now, the networks are indeed evolving at high speed and on many fronts. So we have been talking in this, this panel about back office evolution from purpose-built uh, hardware, big iron implementations, but that for sure uh, evolving into cloud-native virtual applications. DOCSIS itself, of course, has constantly 3.1, very much a mainstream today, but plans are starting to build, being built, how the migration to 4.0 will be looking like. As I said, various DAA technologies and architectures have been promoted, remote FI RPD architectures, as well as MACFI RMD architectures. With DAA, obviously there is a major transformation from analog optics into ethernet and IP based tran transmission with these converged interconnect networks. And last but certainly not least, the industry is still pushing all the time the envelope of more spectrum to get more capacity and uh, reach towards these 10G speeds that we are targeting. So quite a lot on the desk and many of these developments have interconnections. So uh, there needs to be a package of roadmap plans, how these all different frontiers are moving forward. So let's look at those timings one by one. So back office, obviously classically built with integrated CMTSEs during 3.0 era. Now that of course has moved already to mainstream DOCSIS 3.1 deployments, but still on big iron CCAP cores mainly. But when we are moving towards 4.0, I think it is very much a consensus that this big iron will be replaced with this fully virtualized back office applications, cloud native applications. Some of them are obviously already being deployed during 3.1 era. Uh, DAA, I already touched upon this earlier, but if we look at this evolution, it has been a quite interesting journey. Uh, back in mid 2010s, there were already MACFI implementations, which were pre-standard, uh, mainly promoted by telco OEMs like Huawei and Nokia. Couple of big implementations in Europe, but this really didn't take off in, in, in mainstream. While standard-based remote FI solutions architectures are moving into the mainstream, where obviously we are moving the hardware, the modulators from, from back office to the node, the distributed CAM type of architectures. But now it is already a prophecy that uh, I think we can pretty safely say that the next move will be towards MACFI architectures. Obviously Cable Labs is facilitating that with the FMA standard work, uh, mainly 
I believe this will be happening in the mainstream when 4.0 systems are mature, but obviously some early de developments can happen already earlier. So it's kind of an interesting journey. And now I will try to go deeper that why, what are the reasons that the, we seem to be motivated to change architectures at a pretty high pace. So taking spectrum still into this picture, one more element. But uh, now, the, of course, we are already now moving from this integrated CMTS and classical analog optics and HFC systems towards uh, remote fire architectures when analog optics we are now replacing with SYN Ethernet networks, but still leveraging the big iron CCAP cores as uh, what has been already launched somewhere since 2013-14. So this is now the step one that is now becoming the mainstream. But I think it is already foreseeable that the step, step two is ahead of us where this big iron CCAP will be replaced with virtualized back office DOCSIS controllers, MAC managers, they will still re, uh, uh, benefit from this SYN infrastructure that we launched in this first phase. But as my prophecy is saying, the MAC will be pushed from the core towards the node. And um, hence, remote MAC fi would become eventually the mainstream. Obviously, different flavors exist. Comcast is following their full duplex route, but a mainstream DAA scenario, what we are forecasting is looking like this. And then the question is, again, I repeat, why? So why did the industry move to remote fire architecture? And even more importantly, once we have now this implemented in a mature way, why to take the next headache and re-architect again with MacFi? So here we go. So first question, why did the industry move to remote fire? And these are my thoughts, my perspectives. There can be, of course, very deep engineering reasoning. There can be very deep financial reasoning. This is my snapshot, how I see the, I see the argumentation. My first bullet, with remote file move, uh, we were avoiding write-off of recently invested CCAP core assets. So these were deployed, DOCSIS 3.1, capable CCAP core systems were deployed already 2014-15 and the, by the time the remote file was mature and ready for deployments, there was already a sizable installed base of DOCSIS 3.1 capable uh, CCAP cores and plenty of capacity deployed with plenty of years ahead of usable lifetime. If the industry would have moved to MacFi, uh, these assets would have been stranded. I mean, we would be throwing away well-working functioning capacity and uh, possibly making write-offs in the balance sheets of the MSOs. So that's my first argument. Second argument, uh, these are big architectural changes that we are doing in the systems. And uh, I guess cable industry has been wanting to do predictable step-by-step -step changes and avoiding major evolutions. And uh, with remote FI, uh, we can do this big step to replace the analog optics with the SYN network, but we do not need to touch the, 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 the complex topic of integrating the back office again. So all the CCAP core was isolating the remote FI change, the SYN change for, for, from this OSS BSS integration all the subscriber management, uh, provisioning systems, all of that were remaining as before. So we could take one big change at a time and do that in a predictable manner. I still remember back five, six, seven years visiting SCTE Expos and there was what I would call conservatism concerns and risks raised. Uh, when some were suggesting to move the Mac to the field. Especially tangible points were pointed out with power consumption. And fair enough, with the silicon implementations at that, at that stage, 
power consumption would probably have been excessive, especially for the European street cabinet implementations. So that was a very detailed, relevant topic. But also there were plenty of concerns about, hey, how are we going to deploy and maintain tens of thousands of Mac devices in the field when uh, MSO engineers were feeling a bit challenged to keep even tens of CCAP cores with CLI interfaces up and alive. So these were certainly concerns expressed back then. Uh, furthermore, uh, and I think this is also a reasonably important point, that with Mac RemoteFi being the industry agenda, the industry could secure a technology vendor ecosystem uh, to do these implementations, do the R&D investments with RemoteFi, both core vendors, Cisco, Comscope, uh, CASA were committed to do their investments and node vendors like us were also seeing the business case to do this investment. So we had a very good healthy ecosystem that we are now enjoying today. And uh, finally, obviously when the remote file was selected as the way forward, we developed in Cable Labs pretty solid set of standards uh, which now we are seeing in multi-vendor ecosystems being realistic today. So these are my top level thoughts, why it made sense, why the industry, why the MSOs moved to remote file. So then the next big question, if something works, why to break it? Why to now move towards Mac5 once we have get, got uh, remote file architectures as mature? So here we go. Uh, let's see if you agree with my observations. My first observation is that the big Kion CCAP core installed base is aging. So this needs to be replaced anyway when we are moving towards 4.0. So now we do not have this stranded asset uh, element in the decision making. There is more freedom to do these next steps when it comes to the core. And as uh, John was explaining, uh, I think there is now very strong consensus that uh, virtualization is the way to go and the whole back office will move from purpose-built hardware point solutions towards uh, cloud environment, cloud native environment, in order to have more dynamic way to manage network assets. That is happening in the mobile industry as we speak, there is no reason why it shouldn't happen also in the fixed and doxies more specifically. So virtualization is a way to go. And within that framework, what Eric was already addressing also is the latency. And uh, with pushing the real-time Mac processing towards the node and to the node, the, that is enabling more freedom in, in virtualizing the back office. So distance limits are gone, more centralization can be done. The back office virtualization has more levels of freedom to be implemented once the real time stuff is running on the node itself. And I think during the past years, there is more and more real world evidence that MacFire is actually working. With the most recent systems on a chip, it looks very feasible to implement the Mac within the power consumption constraints we have, uh, it looks like that we might, we could be able to do MACFI implementations with next gen chipsets with similar power consumption as uh, first gen remote five. Time will show. Uh, robust MACFI implementation has been done. We have been doing mini CMTS implementations. We talked about Nokia and Huawei and these advanced network management tools have proven track record. Okay, quickly looking at this, how this is supporting fixed mobile conversions. I think these were already pretty well addressed, but I repeat the common SYN network supporting all backhauls, not only DOCSIS. DOCSIS is evolving to low latency, supporting mobile backhaul. And we have this common virtualization framework that John was talking about. So my conclusions, DAA is a mandatory step to all these strategic evolution. It is the step that needs to be done now to be ready for the future. And there are these big benefits on promise on 
10 G speeds, FMC synergies, virtualization. And this can be done uh, in a predictable manner in two steps. Start the step now, now with mature, mature DOCSIS 3.1 technology and get all that SYN introduced scalable. But it's still a complex learning journey. It takes time because it touches different parts of the MSO organization. So this is the first step and then start to get prepared for the next one, which is the MacFi and virtualization. Thank you very much for your time.